Hearing plays a vital role in how we interact with and navigate through our environments. Yet, how is it that we are able to detect and then transduce mechanical sound waves into electrochemical neural signals? As we'll soon see, it is the remarkable organization and complexity of the ear which enables auditory transduction. The ear serves as the sensing and transducing organ of hearing. Let's begin by looking at the general organization of the ear. The ear consists of three anatomically and functionally distinct divisions, the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. The outer ear is on the outside of our heads. It's the part of the ear we can see. There are two main parts of the outer ear. The first part, the pinna, funnels sound waves into the second part, the auditory canal which then further funnels those sound waves to the tympanic membrane, also known as the eardrum. The tympanic membrane is the division point between the outer and middle ear. When sound waves contact the tympanic membrane, it vibrates at a rate proportional to the properties of those sound waves. The middle ear is located on the other side of the tympanic membrane. It is an air-filled chamber consisting of three distinct bones, also called ossicles, which are connected to each other in series. The malleus, also known as the hammer, the incus, also known as the anvil, and the stapes, also known as the stirrup. This chain of ossicles links the tympanic membrane and the oval window. When sound waves hit the tympanic membrane, they are then amplified by the middle ear on their way to the oval window. Thus, the middle ear serves as a signal amplifier. Lastly, the oval window is the passage into the inner ear. The major structure we'll focus on in the inner ear is the cochlea. The cochlea consists of spiraling fluid-filled tubes and can be recognized by its characteristic snail shell appearance. It is here where the transduction of sound waves into neural signals takes place. Specifically, this involves the conversion of mechanical stimuli into electrochemical signals, which then signal further to the brain via the auditory nerve. To understand transduction, we must focus deeper into the structure of the cochlea. If we take a closer look at the cochlea, we see that just past the oval window, there are fluid-filled membranous tubes that wrap around one another in a spiral. If we take a cross-section of a tube in that spiral, we will be able to look inside. Let's further focus in on the middle canal, also known as the cochlear duct, which runs the length of the coiled-up cochlea. If we zoom in even further, we can see first the basilar membrane, which lines the bottom of the cochlear duct. Next, you may notice there is a group of cells embedded within the basilar membrane. The major cell type we'll focus on here are hair cells, which are sensory receptor cells. These are specialized cells that are able to respond to outside stimuli and synapse with sensory neurons. Hair cells don't look like typical neurons. However, changes in their membrane permeability, just as in neurons, leads to the release of neurotransmitters and graded potentials in the postsynaptic sensory neurons they synapse onto. The mechanosensing ability of hair cells comes from the small protrusions on their top surfaces called cilia. These hair-like cilia structures are then directly attached to the tectoral membrane which is located in the middle of the cochlear duct. Taken together, the basilar membrane, the embedded hair cells and their cilia, and the tectoral membrane enable auditory transduction. When sound waves reach the inner ear, they initiate vibrations of the oval window, which then produces waves that travel through the fluid-filled cochlear duct. You can imagine ocean waves closing in on shore or a wave pool where the wave generating engine is the oval window. 
As the wave is passing through the cochlear canal, it initiates movements in the basilar membrane. The basilar membrane is fairly flexible, so it is able to move in response to wave propagation. On the other hand, the tectorial membrane is stiff and therefore is not able to move in response to wave propagation. Thus, in the presence of sound waves, the basilar membrane moves up and down under the stationary tectorial membrane. Remember, the basilar and tectorial membranes are connected by the hair cell cilia. Thus, as the basilar membrane moves up and down, it causes bending of the hair cell cilia. When the cilia bend, the canal sensitive channels open, inducing electrochemical signals in the hair cells, allowing for neurotransmitter release onto auditory sensory cells, which then signal via the auditory nerve to the brain. Taken together, the outer, middle, and inner compartments of the ear allow for the amplification and transduction of sound waves that travel through our auditory worlds into usable neural signals, which eventually travel to our brains to be perceived and interpreted.